integration of root functions is almost the same as differentiation of root functions. And there are two steps you have to perform actually the same as when you differentiate, but this time of course the other way around since you want to integrate. And the way how it works, like one example, I already showed in the differentiation video of root functions. So you have a root function, or in this case, just a number, but later, of course, it will be a function depending on x. And this time we have 5, square root of 5, and the trick is now to rewrite it as power. So you can write square root of 5 also as 5 to the power of a half. And now the trick is first increase or add 1 to the power. So just plus 1. And then divide by the new power. Right? So the solution is here. Increase by 1. The, the increase the power by 1. So, uh, so we add 1. We have 5. Right? 5 to the power of a half. So we add 1. 1 is 2 half. 2 half plus 1 half is 3 half. And then we divide by the new power, which is when we divide 5 to the power of 3 half by the new power, which is 3 half. We can also write it as 2 divided by 3 times 5 to the power of 3 half. That's the trick. This is how it works. And of course, uh, always think about the C whether your teacher or professor requires you to write the CC uh, element R, since when you differentiate this term, uh, the black term, then you, uh, or including the C, then you would usually lose the C. So back when you integrate, then you never know, has there been any C or not? So that, this is why usually you write, there could be some C, it doesn't have to be, but it could be that there's a C, and we indicate that that's a number, uh, not depending on X, with C element R. So this is the principle, how it works. But I'm also going to show you uh, an example in a second. I will show you how to do integration of root functions. It works the same way as differentiation of root functions, just the other way around. So it's not really difficult. And the trick is... The trick is just you have to write the the root function as a power function. So we just I'm just going to demonstrate it to you. We have root square root of five and we can write that as five to the power of a half. And another example is the third uh root of five. And we can always write 5 to the power of 1, right? And also here, 1, and we can also always write like square root, and either this way or with 2 this is also okay. And so this goes, this power goes, listen carefully, in the D in, in the numerator, and this number goes in the denominator. Numerator, denominator. So this number, as I just wrote it, goes in the numerator. This number goes in the denominator. And same story here. We have uh, then as outcome 5 to the power of 1 third. And it's not very difficult. Actually, you just have to write the root as a power. That's the trick. And then you see it's very easy. You can easily apply the power rule when you do integration or differentiation. So we just calculate an example. We have given some function, which is a third root of 7x plus 16. And we should integrate it. So how to do it? First, as I said, the trick, apply the trick which is to write it as a power. So you have 7x, so you can also write this to the power of 1. And so as I said before, remember this trick I introduced to you. The 1 I just wrote goes into goes in the numerator, and the 3 
goes in the denominator. So 7x plus 16 to the power of 1 third. And this is much better to, to, to do integration with. As we see, we can easily apply the power rule. That's what we are going to do. So we have the integration now with the c here. Don't forget the c. Since we don't know when we differentiate, we don't know about the final element, which doesn't have any x, because it disappears like some 5. And this function would disappear when we differentiate, and so we don't know actually this when we integrate back whether there has been some 5 or not. So that's why we write the c. And so let's just do it. The rule when we integra integrate powers is we increase the power by 1. So we take everything and we just increase the power by 1, which is 7x plus 16. We just keep it. We increase 1 third plus 1. So it's 1 third plus 3 thirds is 4 thirds. And now the thing is, when we differentiate this, we have a problem because this would go to the front, right? But we don't see it here. So the thing we do is we just multiply by the inverse fraction. So we multiply with 3 divided by 4. When we multiply 4 thirds with 3 divided by 4, then we end up with 1. So both eliminate each other, sort of. And there's another problem in this case. We have 7x plus 16, so we have to do the inner der derivation, which is 7 in this case. But the thing is also, we didn't see a 7 before, like as a factor. So we have to divide by the 7, so times uh, 1 divided by 7, so that everything which is going to... to uh, happen like as a new factor will be eliminated so that we end up with a function like this. There's no factor in front of it and so this, this is how we deal with it. And don't forget the c and we write it at, at the end c element r and we can also actually we could maybe but it depends on, on, on the taste whether you think it looks better but I don't think it gets much better. So we can divide 3 4 times 7 is 28, so we have 3 divided by 28 times 7x plus 16 to the power of 4 divided by 3 plus c. And what you can also do now is to write this part as a root function again. But it, it doesn't really look nice, I think, but you can do it. And it may be that also of course, that you find something like this in an exercise in, in the exam or homework. Again, so I just demonstrated. We have 7x plus 16. We write it as a root. So as we said, the numerator is within the brackets then, uh, within the root. So we would have a 4 to the power of 4 and third root plus c. So I, I read it again. We have 3 divided by 28 times the third root of 7x plus 16, and this expression to the power of 4. And when we would change the, the uh, format of this again to a power, uh, to, then we would write 7x plus 16 to the power of 4 thirds. Because this is how we can change the notation from root function to a power function. And this is basically how it works, integration of root functions. The trick is to write the root function as a power function. Thanks for watching. Practice makes perfect further exercises with solutions you can find on my website, which is www.worksheets.com.